Back when I was a young, hip, yet naive newcomer to the GMRS and HAMS radio walkie-talkie scene, I thought that power output was the most important factor for getting as many FARs out of my radio as possible. I even went so far as to pay twice as much monies for an 8-watt version of the UV5R instead of getting the 5-watt version because according to the math in my head, the 8-watt version with its massive 3 more watts should be able to transmit way more FARs than the puny 5-watt UV5R. And this is because, in my ignorance of youth, I assumed that if a radio could get, say, 5 miles of FARs on 5 watts, then the radio should get double that many FARs with 10 watts of RF electricities. However, it turns out that this is not the case, so allow me to lay out the cold, hard facts so that you don't accidentally say something stupid and look dumb in front of all of your cool GMRS radio dork friends, like I did. When talking about why power is not the most important factor, most YouTubers will show you this kind of charts and graphs. So when looking at these, it should be very clear to you. Actually, it should be outright obvious when looking at these that some people will do whatever they can to try and show everyone how smart they think they are. So unlike all of those other YouTubers, allow me to break it down like a normal person and explain it all in a way that even you will be able to understand. Contrary to popular internet belief, adding more power is not the best way nor the most cost-effective way to get more FARs out of your two-way radio. Allow me to say that again so there is no room for any confuculation. Adding an amplifier to your radio or getting the 8-watt version of a radio instead of the 5-watt version of a radio is not the best way to get more FARs. And in some cases, it will make no difference at all. As you saw only a moment ago, there are mathematical formulas that prove this, but basically, in order to make any significant or noticeable difference in signal strength, you need to increase your power output of your radio by four or five times. This means that to double the FARs of your radio, you would need to increase the power a lot. Not by just one or two watts, you would have to double, triple, or quadruple the amount of power that you are squirting out of your antenna. And this does not even take into account any mountains, forests, or buildings and houses full of calorically enhanced people that might be blocking your signal. Nor does this take into account the curvature of the Earth, which, although is still a hotly debated subject, if the curvature of the Earth actually even does exist, it would theoretically also limit your FARs no matter how much power your radio is squirting. Increasing your power in smaller amounts might help give your signal more Penetration, penetration through walls, trees, and buildings full of fat people. And if you happen to be using a long length of coax to connect to an antenna, say up on your roof, that extra few watts of power can help make up for all of the power that will dissipate and be lost through the coax itself because you refuse to pay $6 per foot for the good coax. And on the downside, what you will notice with more power is that more power will suck the juice from your battery much, much faster. Even a small difference, like 5 watts versus 8 watts, will make a noticeable difference in the life of your battery, whilst giving you virtually zero more Fars. And this is why 9 out of 10 radio experts agree that the best and most cost-effective way to get more FARs is to get a bigger, better, properly tuned antenna and get that antenna up as high as you possibly can. Even switching from the small rubber ducky antenna that came with your radio to a properly tuned mobile antenna made for a car 
just magnetic mounted to a cookie sheet and setting in your window, will perform far better than the small antenna with two or three times more power. Nine out of ten radio experts also agree that that tenth guy is a moron. Finally, I would just like to add and clarify that I'm referring only to UHF radios and frequencies such as GMRS and HAM's 70 semen eaters frequencies. On lower frequencies, such as the HAM's 2-meter band or CB radio, things may be different. I don't know. So in an exclusive first-time event on my channel, I am going to take the advice of some people and just stay in my own lane on that one, and I will allow the online experts to tell us in the comments if it's any different on CB radio or other lower frequencies.